finished in... There was a whole bunch of shit, but it was bottled in 2021, so it's been sitting around since 2021, and I'll tell you what, I took a shot of this, and I'm a whiskey drinker. This shit will get you, uh, it'll get to your wings. <laughs> this will give you your wings. The Duke was definitely trying to clear out some intestinal problems and kill all bad bacteria, because that was a spicy and fiery first shot. When I took it, I was like, whoo, you guys heard me. But you know, I'm mixing it a little stronger right now. I'm gonna, whoops. Ha, here's your sign. I put the fucking top back on and it's not pouring out. Fucking Duke. So here we go. We're gonna get into this. 33 people now. I thought we had 12. I thought we were gonna have a nice little class or episode. Now all of a sudden there's 33. Well, I guess I have, welcome. But this is a nice, uh, it's a nice drink. Actually, I'll be hammered by the end of this episode, that's for sure. So, we've got the uptrending support. But now I wanted to go into a smaller time frame with Bitcoin real quick to see what's going on on this thinly traded weekend. So, like I said before, this pattern still had a little bit left to uh, fill out. And it's trying to. That's why we were talking about 29,500, 600, maybe. Maybe get rejected right about 30,000. But there's nothing here, guys. That's the problem. There's nothing. Nada. Zero. Look at that volume. Even on this rising price. So, we have rising price, crashing volume. Well, that's a recipe for, even if we get lucky, you're coming down. I mean, there's only so many ways we can draw this up. But I think we've drawn it out phenomenally. And I think everybody who's in here benefits. But I want to know from the audience... I know a few of you guys and gals have said, and I think this hype train's still going. I can't believe we did one so early today. That's got to be a new record. You guys are like, we're going to spoil him real quick so he doesn't leave, and then we're going to shut the hell up. The T-Fam is focused indeed. So no pump, no pump, access, JMF. So the hype train ended. Two gift subs and 1,200 total bits. I'm honored. I'm honored. Thank you very much for everybody who contributed to the hype train. I appreciate that. So Axis, no, Sean, nay, Fox, small pump, maybe after the weekly close. Ah, uh, true, not unless some groups that put together or get together some manipulate. But that's just asking for a dump because there's no news. Agreed, true, I agree with that 100%. Super Fat Monk, sign point to not even, to not even the in, uh, YouTube influence all have right in their thumbnails. Laugh a lot. Absolutely. They have no choice now because no matter where they buy in, they're all losers. No offense to them, but they are. My main lobster side bets now are Stronghold, Aquarius, Velo, and last but not least, Platinum, Silver, and Gold from Min X. In other words, lobster curated assets, none of the frogsters from the QSI News Age. Yep. It's the way you got to do it, Token. If you're going to go down that road, I like the route you're going. True with the 300 bits. I don't know what I did tonight to get all these 300 bit donations, but. God bless each and every one of you because the Duke is on the kaboom. Whew. That is a spicy. I've had a lot of bourbon and whiskey in my life. I've never had the Duke. The Duke will grow you wings. I'm telling you. I'm all, it's almost a shame that CW's not in here. Maybe he secretly didn't want to come in. He's like, he's like, I know it's a. T, uh, XRP Future Millionaire needs to grow some hair on his balls. I'm going to do it for him. So, so what do we think about Bitcoin? Do we think we're pretty accurate here? Do we think we're going to continue? Obviously, I think a lot of the crowd is saying we're going to continue with this bearish continuation. <clears throat> the 20 crossing the 50 is going to now turn into 50. And now the 100. Now the 20 is going to cross the 100 here. As the uh, weekly candle close ends tomorrow at 8 p.m., to flip another candle. As of right now, to flip this in a positive light, I would say you would have to have a candle close that ends up breaking somewhere to the top half to where we could have a hammer candle and maybe pull up. But this, to me, looks very bad. Very bad. So you're looking to break at least 30,000, if not better. But it's bad. Um... 
I see a continuation pattern in the weekly. I'm trying to go a little bit slower today so that we can focus on each and every one more than just, oh, we went on Bitcoin for 13 seconds and now let's get to XRP and we're rounding to XLM and getting back up to Matic. I'd rather, you know, sit and talk about each and every one of these tonight because I feel like it's bringing more value. So if it takes too long, too damn bad, enjoy the Duke. So that's what I'm looking at. Wow, what are all these donations? Fuck me. Storm Patrol, thanks for the 500 bits. I really appreciate that. Real talk. And then Jurgen with another 200 bits. Because he said, why the hell not? You guys are lighting it up. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Nathan, XRP to 20 seems strong. Is it a possibility to it doesn't get to 11? Always a possibility, Nathan. Always a possibility. But the, the bigger possibility is here. I'll tell you guys a story and you tell me what has more of a chance of happening. So, true, I've been making small but steady profits. That's why I appreciate that, true. Hey, fine by me. Love the, I love when people pay it forward when they're actually making money. <coughs> it's the greatest compliment to me. Jurgen, thank you so much for those 200 bits. I appreciate it. Hey, American Zebra, I got to bring the energy. If not me, then who else? And we got True with the hype train on him, too, because he was a hype train starter. Can you believe that? Only the True have the uh, hype train. I think there's only two people in here. And the other one's the one who's trying to get my uh, get me hammered. <laughs> we don't know what his intentions are now, do we? <laughs> and he's not in here to defend himself, the poor bastard. <laughs> Let's see. So, okay. So, you asked me if XRP is going to get to 11 cents. Well, here's another story. So, I mean, it has no relevance because it doesn't even exist. But here's a story that happened once upon a time to me. So, one time I was walking outside. I kid you not, I couldn't fucking believe it. I was hitting my joint. And this might just be a vision because I was smoking. It was good stuff. But uh, you'll never, a leprechaun walked up to me and said, Tom! Hey, uh, you know, I hear you're on, uh, you're the XRP Future Millionaire, but you got no fucking money, so how about I help you out here? We're gonna go walk down to the, uh, to the rainbow down there, you know, it's a little bit down the road. Just got that, yeah, keep me in the drum, we'll get there. We get there, and I'm like, well, what the fuck are we doing here? He's like, I just gotta walk to the other side of the fucking rainbow, just keep walking, you lazy fuck. So I walk over there, fucker pulls right out of his sock, he pulls a fucking jar of fucking, a gold fucking... Gold pot of gold. So Tom C just gotta believe. Now we can either believe that happened or that XRP is gonna go to eleven cents. What is more likely to happen? Well, in this scenario, I'd say XRP has a very good chance of getting to eleven cents. So I think based on this story, XRP must get to eleven cents because I don't see any chance in how that a leprechaun is gonna lead me to the end of a rainbow and hand me a pot of gold. So I think we have no choice for our dignity. Our dignity relies on XRP getting to 11 cents to let this fucking leprechaun off the hook. Kenny, what have you walked into? I was just telling everybody about a story that may or may not have happened. So that's why XRP has to go to 11 cents. Otherwise, the world's over. Like Nathan said, it's science and you can't argue science. See, true, you get it. Uh, Herm, I'm not smoking anything. That's the thing. I'm drinking the Duke. <laughs> I'm drinking the Duke. That's it. I've had two shots of the Duke. That's it. I'm telling you, CW wanted me, uh, maybe he was trying to take me out. Maybe I, he, maybe he's secretly starting YouTube. So I can't have him as competition. <laughs> so, with XRP in the 30 minute, Look, I, I, I thought I would scare more people away tonight, but apparently we're just going to stay here. Um, we're just going to stay with people. So that's cool. I don't, mind, I don't mind catering an audience. Oftentimes, I do try to get rid of people when the show starts. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that. Well, because I figure if I'm going to put out information, it might as well be the people that want to hear it. Instead of the people who just want to get rich. I'm not interested in making people rich. I want them to learn. And then you can get rich, you know? Then, then you can get rich. So we're fighting the 20-day. 
we actually have a bowl flag, a minor bowl flag with the smallest amount of volume that you're going to see. And people are like, well, what does it look like if you have increasing volume, but it's not very good? This, this. Exhibit A, XRP volume. Even though the volume is increasing, very big wick pullbacks. But there's no sustainability. So, I mean, the best we're looking for here is probably a retest of this drop point. You got this bearish continuation. But what, what do I always say? On these stupid continuations, they always try to trap people. So wouldn't it be too easy for it to just do this? So usually what happens is you get a quick up. And it'll be like a 15 minute or two hour quick up. But the sad thing is, is these quick ups. Hey, Tom, we're rich. We're up to 41 cents. I mean, I'm having a ball these last few weeks because now people are like, hey, we rebounded, Tom. What do you think we're rebounding? Can you believe it? I'm going to be rebounding. We're rebounding. We're so fucking 12 cents under 52 cents, which you said we could never get back to, let alone break it by 12 fucking cents. But yeah, we're rebounding. Let me take a shot of the Duke. Duke. The damn blokes. They should hit the Duke. One would think I'm advertising for the Duke, but I'm not. <laughs> you know, if the Duke is listening out there right now, we should start a partnership. I'll come on. That goes for anybody who's advertising whiskey. That go I'll come on. We could do a whole thing with the XRP Future Millionaire. When you trade XRP and think you're going to be a future millionaire, you better have a whiskey on the rocks. The Duke. Just in case. Yeah, I would love it. The Duke. For when XRP goes limp. Ooh, you better have a bottle all the time because XRP is always limp, as we can see now. Exhibit A, limp dick XRP. Home of the bear flag. <laughs> XRP might as well be the home of the bear flag. <laughs> We're the home of the bears here at XRP. We haven't seen a sunny day in months. Hell, we haven't seen $2 in, well, we don't want to talk about the half a decade that's gone by. Last time XRP seen double digits. Well, that would be never. Last time XRP... Seen $2, I was still in my mid-30s. Now I'm almost 40. Well, actually, when was the last time XRP... When was the last time XRP seen $2? Last time XRP was 2 I'm just curious. Oh, look at that beautiful number. 38 and a half cents XRP checking in. Kenny, remember when we were talking about XL? I'm at 38 and a half cents. And then we said, well, what if XRP is at 38 and a half cents? Where would XLM be? And I said, well, that puts it at about 12.6. We did even better than that. You know, by popular request, I don't care what anybody says. I'm singing sunny days because it's been requested and we'll. So. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, we got to get there first. Voila, Tom. I said I was going to bust you. God, Bob, can I just sing Sunny Days, please? I was having a good time. Voila, Tom, do you mind if I take a shot with you? Bob, you're supposed to stay on YouTube. Now I'm going to look like an idiot on Twitch now. Voila, Tom. You know, I think it's pretty bullshit that you come on here and you never bring me. Bob, I told you, if you want to come on and you want to watch, that's one thing. But you always got to be a dick to me. While I'm feeling good, I'm up big. I was down 72%. I used to watch the run, guys. They bent me over so many times. Bob, can you just shut up about the run? Guys? While uh, Tom, I'm no longer down 72%. I know, Bob. We know you're up big, Bob. Can you just let me sing Sunny Days? While, uh, Tom? Will you just sing Sunny Days? You know... <laughs> I love you, Bob. God! Told you I was going to bring whiskey so that I didn't have to deal with you, Bob. While, uh, Tom? I think you sound better when you're drunk. Bob, I'm not drunk. I've had two shots. I'd hardly call that drunk. If I was drunk, you wouldn't be on here. Well, I disagree, Tom. Yeah, I guess you got me there, you cocksucker. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, 
Voila, Tom, will you not call me that on the way out? Fine, Bob, my precious one. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. By God, I don't know how we would have done this without you. Now, will you please leave? Stage left. Voila. Thanks, Tom. That made me feel pretty damn good. Ladies and gentlemen, the sun. Sunny days are here again. Oh, sunny days. Oh, what a day. Oh, sunny days. Oh, what a day. I wear glasses cause I can't see a motherfucking thing. Happy days. Oh, happy days. Oh, what a day. Oh, happy days. Oh, what a day. XRP will reign supreme. Let's just not get caught in the foot. Oh, we're gonna crash, and we did, but everybody said I was a dope, but it's okay. They held the rope, bent over, and I laughed, because I have my portfolio, and they're picking it up. I want to see your guys' opinion. What should come next? Because I think the verses are good, but I don't know if we should add more to it. Because that's how it flows to that part, and then after that, there's no hope. XRP's a joke. What do we buy? Not XRP. Because <laughs> then we could go. -na -na -na, -na 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 -na. XRP sucks. Yes, it does now, but we won't always. Uh, <laughs> one day it'll be good. We know it will. But not for now. Thank you very much. Okay, now. Uh, there. I hope that satisfied everybody's urge of sunny days. I told you Bob was going to ruin it. Hey, American Zebra. Thanks for the 100 bits. Woo. You know, the Duke is a spicy son of a bitch. I'll tell you what. Do not drink and drive on the Duke. I wouldn't even suggest you ride your bike on the Duke. Fuck. I wouldn't even suggest you give technical analysis on the Duke. Because the Duke made you do it. Right? Yeah. He's strong, wasn't he? I, I swear to God, he cleared out my sickness in one fucking shot. If you guys are suffering from the uh, blah, blah, blah variant, take a shot of the Duke. He'll make it a nice rebuttal. <laughs> yep, we're good for now. I agree, Blue Green. It never does, Kenny, does it? Brother Tom, can you look at Link Solo? Crypto.com coin and quant. Jesus Christ. No, I'm just kidding. Well, we can see what we can do. First things first, though. We already did XRP a little bit. Did a little bit of Bitcoin. Kind of just been shooting the shit today. You know, it's Saturday. What are we going to do? We're trying to get through it. Um, but I'm feeling good. You know what's funny? At 9 o'clock, we might even go on YouTube and do a live just to see all the douchebags out there. I'm No offense to any of you guys because you're mostly from YouTube. And people are like, how are you going to insult everybody on YouTube, you cocksucker? Because I'm on YouTube and I'm one of the douchebags. I mean, I am a streaming on, or I am a fucking content creator on YouTube. Wouldn't I be the biggest douchebag of them all? If only a dummy would put content out on YouTube. <laughs> So, why watch technical analysis if you can't have a conversation? But this is what we're looking at with XLM. And we're trying to see if we could have got this pedestrian amount over the weekend. The biggest problem, and I try to keep it fun, guys, yes, because I see what's happening and I know it's going to be bad. So, hell, if I can make you laugh while you're losing all your money, that's one thing. Unless you're listening, then we're laughing together. We're taking a shot, hitting the joint. And then at the bottom, we're going to buy together. But I want you guys to have money left. That's why I don't advise to buy these little dips. And yada, yada, yada. How many times, guys, over the last six months have we heard somebody say, buy the dip? Hey, Tom, you got to buy the dip. 
Take my word, by the dip. By the dip. By the dip. No. I prefer not to buy the dip. Because it's not the dip. Right? This is bend over central if you start buying all these dips. Had you have bought the dip all the way down, you would only be down 68% instead of 80% if you would have just bought one dip. Had you have bought no dips, you would have all of your money left. What a fucking concept. In a bear market, not trying to swing trader by the dip. Huh. I'll be a son of a bitch. I'll be a I'll, you're telling me that if I don't swing trade a bear market, I will have all my money left? Huh. And that's a better option than trying to swing trade to get more XRP because what is it? What was it? Because we're in a bear market, I'll get more XRP just by not losing my money? Holy shit, a revelation's been made. You know, and that's the true revelation. Once people understand you don't have to swing trade, I need to swing trade to get more XRP. Says fucking who? Says who? If it goes down 18%, you can buy 18% more XRP without swing trading XRP. Then when it goes back up to 18%, now you've made 36%. More than you would have. And you have 18% more XRP. Hmm. You know, there might be some value to this after all, I believe. I know a lot of people come and go, but they all come back. A lot of people leave, but they always come back. You know why? There's no way to avoid the fact when people leave and they're like, this guy's a fucking idiot. He's saying we're going to go down to these fucking numbers. Then they look and they're like, holy shit, we're at these numbers. I'm going to go see what the fuck Tom's saying. Oh, that cocksucker, he's still bearish. This guy's always going to be bearish. Nobody's ever going to make money. But nobody's going to lose money when it's in a bear market. Then we're going to make the money. And this is all the same shit. I, I, I don't have to draw anything out because we're literally finishing out this pattern. And then people can say, hey, we're in a descending triangle. Oh, jack off. We haven't exactly finished the ascending triangle. So we can call whatever we want. Falling channel. But the point is this pattern isn't done, you know. So that's the four hourly. I think we're in a much bigger channel that nobody's acknowledging. We have the downtrending support that has come all the way back here to 18. Yes, granted, we haven't hit it in a while, but the resistance we hit up here in 2021 and we've rode this. Well, oftentimes after you ride this kind of a pa uh, pattern or a play, it ends up falling off the map if you can't hold these support levels. I mean, you can see a tailor-made pattern here. Let me put it in the weekly so it's a little bit easier. This is tailor-made when it pulls down. I mean, that is, it's tailor-made to come into this area. And it almost would speak like, hey, we have an uptrend. Or we could be forming something in this area. It really, to me, it feels like that. I don't really care what anybody says. I feel like that's what's happening. Back to the consolidation zone. We had a nice little pump up. The Fed was pumping everything up, but the Fed took their money. We went, nope, we're going back to the consolidation area because we're comfortable there. Other than that, I don't think it really matters. <clears throat> you know, American Zebra, I have no idea if I thank you for the 100 bits or not. I kind of went off on a... I don't even know where I've been. I'm Welcome back, everybody. I'm back. Florida here, jointless on a hiatus, but really wanted one today. Whew, that's what we're talking about, Storm. Yep. You know... I've considered, I've considered, I have considered entering your short myself. Oh, I have. The last trade I made was my short on Luna, which made 122%. Now I'm looking at a substantial short. I, I, I could see myself throwing a $3,500 trade at 5 to 10x, shorting it, but... It would have to be at a very specific spot. And I have it all planned out. I really do. If anybody's paying attention, where do you think I would be putting in a short? That's right. See that yellow line that's still drawn on there? If we were to break that uptrending support at 34, no, 33.6, I'd put in my short. Once we break that double bottom, I'm putting in my short. And I'm thinking I could ride it down to this 42%. Imagine if I have a 10x trade or a 5x trade to the short side. You're talking 2 to 400% on 3,500 bucks. Sign me the fuck up! <laughs> no, 
That's what I'm trying to do here. That's the only trade I'm willing to make. Call me crazy, but the patience will pay off. And when we finally break this, I'm fucking buying for the down. Even if I don't use 3500 but I'm a ballsy risk taker, so I would absolutely throw all $3,500 in in the hopes that I can go bam, 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 and I got 10000 If that happens, I'm going to, live on air, I'm going to cry. <laughs> if, I just, if I just pull 3500 into like thirteen grand on this next drop, I mean into ten grand, i am going to be very happy. That's the plan. What do you think, guys? Is that crazy? Or can you see what I'm talking about? Could you see this play panning out? I firmly believe this play will pan out, and it's here for all of us. Let me know what you think in the comments. Yes or no? Is this, am I being a crazy son of a bitch, or can this work? Can we turn 3500 into ten grand on this next drop? You guys forgot when the XRP Future Millionaire gambles, he don't fucking play. You're talking to the same guy who three times in a week, remember, turned 10 bucks into over a grand betting uh, basketball. Do you guys all remember this? I turned three bets in a week for 10 bucks at more than plus 10,000 odds, and I flipped them all three of them into over a grand winners. For all of you, you've all seen it. Because when I talk numbers, I know what I'm talking about. And this is one of those rare times in history where I think we could make a lot of money. Who's with me? Who knows how to leverage trade? It sure is, Lord. I 100% agree. It is definitely building something. Awesome American Zebra. I was hoping I did. I'm pretty good at thinking, everybody. And since I never change how I am and I don't I don't lie to people, it's like, I just talk. And people are always like, oh, he's a fucking cocksucker. He's doing this. I really have no motives. I'm just, I'm here to have fun and try to figure out how we're all going to make all this. I like to make sure we're all making a bunch of money and not losing a bunch of money. It's very simple. Fur babies in Fort Myers is a beautiful place. You know, I'm going to be going, my dad is booking us a vacation for in January out in Florida. So I'll be in the Florida area out in January with old Vincenzo. Um, Let's see, Storm, that's crazy, 33 cents. Yep, American Zebra, 33 cents is exactly the area right there. It would be crazy, Blue Green, but I think it's possible. True, I know you'll be leveraging to the downside. So... True, because I know you do this kind of trading. What's your standard trade on the levers? Do you like the 3x, 5x? Are you one of these crazy bastards who does 20 to 50x? Or are you somebody who likes to do like a 1 or 2 or a 10x? Me personally, it's crazy, but I like the 20x. But if, with 3,500, I wouldn't mind just doing a 10x. I wouldn't do a 20x with that much. And people are like, why not? It's because I don't have to have my liquidation price so close then. But you can see the continuation pattern. I think uh, you got the 20 and the 50 right here. You're crossing it. Um, Kenny's in here. Kenny knows. Ups and downs. Sometimes people think one thing or maybe I might come off a certain way. But at the end of the day, true intentions are always what speak true. Because I'm not lying to anybody. I actually, I speak and I say what I mean. And if it comes off offensive, well, maybe we need to look in the mirrors. You know, and that's... A lot of times when I was offended, I'm like, you know what? For good reason. They're saying something true. I need to fucking look in the mirror sometimes and be like, okay, this is what's going on. And I did that a long time ago. So, let's see. True, that's why I have with you, Tom. I'm growing small trade. Same rules no matter how much the position is. Yes, sir. Yep. 100%. 100% true. And I'm thinking like, right now... If I'm using it at 3,500, I think the strongest thing for me would be to do a 10x because then that would make it 35,000. And then you don't really have to gamble as much, but you have to make sure it's in the exact spots because when you're shorting, guys, the worst thing you can have happen is to shorten a spot like this. The worst thing you can do right here is to short it, 
prematurely before it breaks this, and then we'd have to come back up and test the 20 day or the 200 day. That would be the worst case scenario, and that would be because we didn't do our proper diligence. The next short position here is when we break this ascending triangle, and then the next possible short would be when you break this 11 or 8 cents. There's multiple spots, but if you're going to short it, you do it right when it breaks this uptrend. That's maximum possible potential. Because then, if you short the uptrend and it breaks, let's say you get in at 33.3 after it breaks, first retest is down here at 41%, then 48% at 17.1, then God forbid you hit a fucking home run down to this technical target after, and you're up 67.5%. But what you didn't realize is you 10x this market, and now you're up 675%. That's the holy shit moments. And then you realize you put $3,500 on it. I've been there. Just not in crypto. I used to do this all the time with commodities, and people would be like, Oh my god, you made a shitload of money! <coughs> yeah, but sometimes, to not my credit, I wouldn't cash out. Or I'd buy, sell out and then buy something else. But we're on the same fucking run down. It made no sense. And then I'd end up costing myself 10-15% before I realized, hey, I just got to put this in the physical gold and silver. But, like, why would you... This is my thing. In this scenario, this would be the wandering eye. XRP tanks. We get down to 19.3. Cash out. Have a beautiful 67% drop. Or, what is this right here? The 43% drop. You're on a 10x trade. You're up 430%, you take out, and then you're like, hey, well, now maybe XLM will do the same thing, not realizing we've only done, we've already done what we can do on this move, so why the fuck are we going to something else? Have the small victory, because if I make 400%, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not buying anything. If I make 400% on $3,500, I'm going to buy the most expensive bag of weed I can, is what I'm going to do. But in all reality, you know, we're that close to making a huge profit here. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And with XRP, the beauty of XRP is you don't have to trade USDT in the perpetual futures on KuCoin. Oh, no. Oh, fuck no. With XRP, you can do USD. Welcome to stability, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to stability. Gotta be extremely patient. Oh, the less money I use, the more. I yep, exactly true. If I use a little bit of money, I'll do 20x. But if I'm if I'm doing like 3,500 dollars worth, I'm gonna be doing only like 10x. Uh, I want you and your brother to do a live TA on Twitch together. That uh, we're going to eventually. If my brother wasn't out in Illinois, in Bloomington. Out at Rivian, he's been out there for a couple years, him and my dad now. And my brother was also out with my dad working at uh, Tesla when they first put it online out there. Or were transitioning in 2015. So, but other than that, if he was home, we would. But he's growing his stuff too. He's almost, he's getting closer to like 12, 1300 subscribers. And I never thought he'd put in enough to get the partner and stuff. I thought with his work and stuff, he's all, he's working seven days a week. It's insanity. So for him to put out any videos is a miracle. He's always like, you know, I wish I had the audience like you. Well, I wish I was making $100,000 a year like you, brother. You know, we all have our little things we wish we had. But at the same time, I don't have to leave my family. He hasn't started a family, so he's got it all figured out from his perspective. The way I want to live is exactly how I'm living. Um... So I'll learn the hard way, turn 250 into 1500 or more a couple times, got liquidated, pigs get slot. Yep, Storm, that's exactly it. You can turn it into a lot of money, but then the liquidity. That's why if I, okay, so if I had 3500 the moment that I can take my initial 3500 out, I'm doing it. That's what I try to do right away. Because then you're looking at the trade, and let's say you take 3,500 out, you got 3,500 left. Well, even if it's going down, you're like, okay, well, I got 2,000 left now on the side. Hey, fuck, I got... But as long as you don't have to deal with the liquidation problem, it's, it's a big difference. So, quick question. Do we understand what we're talking about with XRP? Oh, my God, the, liqui the liquidation's hard at 20X. 
And they always get to you. Always in the 20X. Unless you get it right when that uptrend breaks or when the downtrend reverses. That's why I say you have to play it so, so spot on that my trading is so good that I can do 20X and not get hurt by it. You know, but it's... It's you better be not looking in the 30, guys, if you're doing that. You've got to get in the one minute when you buy. So, in the one minute when you buy, and then in the 30 minute or the 15 minute while it's, the trade's going on, the problem is, is look at this tight window we're in right here. So, from here down to here, that's 31% on a 10x trade you've lost. That's 61%. On a 20x trade, you're not that far from liquidation because you don't go 100% down. You might already be getting close to liquidation here. I think the plus minus is this would be within range of a liquidation. So you sure as hell don't want to be caught with your pants down here. Because the worst thing you can do is put $3,500 in and then get liquidated and whitewashed in like two seconds. Like that is a disaster. What's up, Tom? On 20x, take 50 to 75% quickly and let the rest ride. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. If you can get that quick 50% pump real quick, and the 50% doesn't have to be that much on a 20x trade. What is that? That's like 2.5% mm, roughly. The stock's got to move. But yeah, no, true. Real talk, it's hard to explain it, but it's definitely, uh, it has to be done in such a way that it makes it a little difficult. Too damn scared to try, Tom, but if I knew step-by-step, step, I would try, but I'm 50-50. Yep, I, I understand that, Kenny. I understand that completely. Have to catch the first third of the movement, get in lately. Absolutely, Storm, if you get in any time but the exact moment, it is the liquidation up or down, and it happens real quickly. Liquidation candles will get you on 20x. Yes, sir. But imagine the people who are doing the 100x. So I always say you got to have some balls to do the 100x. Because even if you make a good trade, you see the one-minute candles. It's so fucking sporadic. You'll get a liquidation of like 0.75%. You're like, what the fuck was that for? There's not even any volume. Oh, must be some douchebag at 75x on the board. They got to clear out. <laughs> Dumb fuck should have been at 3x. Like he should have been. But no. He had to get greedy. Because he wanted to make 45 times the money instead of three times. That's the thing. Like, everybody does get greedy. Oh, I just need to leverage trade. Let me 3X. But then when you get there, like, why the fuck should I 3X? I got a 10X. Well, why should I 10X if I get 20X? You know, and that's when you get the wandering eye. 3X is fine because if you were only going to make 3.5% and you could guarantee yourself 10. But then you're like, well, you know, if I 3.5%, it's 33.5%. But if I 20x it, that's 70%. Oh, buddy. But then you're like, wait a minute. How am I down $600 already? It's only gone down 0.6%. And you're like, ah, oh, son of a bitch, I'm 75x. Now what do I do? And then while you're considering what to do, you're liquidated. And then Joe Schmo, who's got his down 38%, he's like, ha, ah, it's not so bad now because I'm not... Leverage trading, so I at least own what I have. You know, so there's always the benefits and the risk. So, XRP, I think we all understand. Bitcoin, we understand. XLM, we understand. DGB, I think we all understand. I just haven't shown it on this update. But you see the rounding slowly at the bottom? I am very tempted with DGB to maybe make a little run here. I almost want to buy a long position here, guys. Just to say I did with DGB. Now, we would have to wait for it to hit 1104. Because it's going to come down here in this area. But I think, I really think by the end of the weekend, DGB, assuming that we don't go belly up real quick, I think DGB is going to work on from this 1105 range. And I think it could get us a 7 to 10% move. I do. I think we could come up to here. I think it's going to try to do that. I think it's going to try to do a bullish divergence here. If we go to the 30 minutes, it's easier to see. But the 45, it hasn't quite crossed yet. So I made myself look good. But that's what I'm seeing. Could you guys see this? 1105 is where we're looking for a back test. I'm 
Uh, but I've been in the same show short for over a week. Well, this doesn't seem like a class to be late for. No! Pizza broth. It's been a uh, spectacular class. I had a few shots of the uh, Duke. But I think it's been a good class. It's been a little different. We've just been kind of speaking in a broad spectrum, but... So we were talking about XRP. The last time it was at two bucks. Mm -mm -mm. XRP. When was the last time you were at two bucks? Come on, we can do it. Well, not on this chart, we can't. XRP is 89.7% below the all-time high at $3.84. I mean, it's been so long. Poor XRP. You know, it's pretty embarrassing that XRP cannot get out of this shit. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff with XRP. I mean, we can definitely go. So, key events. XRP is a native to asset of XRP Ledger. A blockchain originally developed in 2011 by Arthur Brito, Jed McCaleb, and David Schwartz. The protocol was officially launched in 2012, and soon after, the team formed a new company called OpenCoin that was led by Chris Larson, who joined as the CEO. The following year, the company changed its name to Ripple Labs before shortening it for marketing purposes to Ripple in 2015. Ripple and XRP are two distinct entities. Ripple is a fintech company, fintech company that builds global payment systems, while XRP is an independent digital asset that can be used by anyone for a variety of reasons including to send remittance or make online payments. So former Yahoo executive Brad Garlinghouse was appointed at Ripple's first chief operating officer in 2015. A year later, Garlinghouse was promoted to the role of CEO. 2020, Ripple was charged by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on the grounds that the company illegally raised $1.38 in unregistered securities offerings. The case has yet to reach a conclusion. So, I mean, that's... Uh, I always love reading through a little of the finer details of XRP because I don't think a lot of people really understand what XRP is. Or that it's not actually Ripple, that it's actually a remittance token. <laughs> so, you know, I always find it fun to do that. So, I think we're pretty on the same page with DGB as well. I think we could see that rounding bottom possibly playing out. Oops. I think if we go into Ethereum, we can also see a few other things that are showing us what we're seeing with XRP as well. We're under 1,800. We do have a W reverse that could possibly play out, but again, if it does, we've already started at 20 cross in the 50. If it's not a fake out, this should come up. and we, We're going to come up a little higher than 1,834. I believe we would come up here to this drop point to about 1,900. Satisfy this pattern, maybe 1,966 if we were to break up. So that's what I would be seeing there with Ethereum. But it's not guaranteed because we're still getting rejected by the broken uh, support. Or resistance, I should say. We have a hammer candle. What was that? Later, William. Um, Have a good one, homie. It's a balance group today. It is definitely a balance group in here today. Um... Oh, we're going to get more than a three-second recap on XLM. We'll get into XLM. I'll do a nice little recap right now. So XLM at 12.3. We started a bullish divergence on the 30-minute time frame. We talked about this on the updates earlier today that we were going to have some kind of little bullish momentum. Remember the 4 to 5%? So if we can hit right here, 
We're going to try to show support. We might have already done that on this reversal candle. Now we have a bullish candle here, a bullish engulfing candle. So if I had to guess, my best guess would say, well, we're going to have to come up higher than here. We're most likely either going to come up to 12.7 or we'll come up to this drop point up here at 13.2. But it looks like, at least for today, we're going to try to come up maybe 2 to 3.5% up to possibly maybe an 8% move. I was calling for a 5, 5.5% five move this weekend, but nothing special. Um, so we'll see if it can make that move or not or if it just gets rejected. As of right now, I would say we're definitely up on the table. We're watching for this pattern to evolve up before it further breaks down. It's kind of like an apple in the diamond bottom style pattern. You can come here, bounce out, maybe come up here, get rejected. I don't think it's going to come way up there. I think more than likely you would have something like this and then roll over. It would kind of make the Batman top. That's what I was trying to say earlier, right? Then maybe a back test and then further drop. But that remains to be seen. The fact is on this weekly engulfing candle, weekly bearish engulfing candle, there's always room to come up still. We still could theoretically, like I said... Come up to this 13. And look how it looks in the weekly compared to a smaller time frame. I mean, you could definitely come up here and still have a hammer style candle that has no relevance. That would be more like a fake out candle. We still have to cross the 200. So you should get that happening starting tomorrow. Night at 8 p.m. You should have a nice impulse to the down. But that doesn't mean we can't finish this out first. So, so I've been very cautiously optimistic. I know we're going to go down here at some point. But there can be spots for little rallies here. And XRP and things, that it almost speaks that we should have some kind of rally here. XDC's not done falling yet, but once we hit this spot over here, especially if the 200-day holds at 2.9, but I'm looking at this 2.18 area. But that doesn't mean we can't have little rebounds here. Like, that one doesn't mean that we can't come up to 6 cents real quick. I just don't see it happening. It's not plausible. The more plausible thing with XDC could do exactly what it's fucking doing. It's coming through this descending triangle. It's broke back up. Now if we can come up and use this as resistance, then we can try to come up here into these areas. If not, this is just going to be a failed back test here by tomorrow night. It's going to come up and then it's just going to be form one of these and then you're going to hit the double bottom down here. I just don't want anybody to get caught in it if that's the route we take. Because that's likely the route we're taking. So, five minutes left, guys. What do you think? Hey, Pizza Breath. Thanks for giving out a gift sub. That's 17 now. Holy shit. Pizza Breath has given out 17 uh, community gift subs. That's very generous. And Search for Crypto got that gift sub. Well, how be damned? Crypto and Cap, welcome. If you guys are new, hit that follow button. Hit that follow button as we make our way up. Ooh, Quant, I forgot about Quant. And guys, I know some of you guys asked for a bunch of different ones. Just couldn't get to them all today. But I'll be back tomorrow. Quant, I've had a little, nice little thing drawn out here for a little bit. So, easy to go over. Falling channel. Falling channel. Remember what we put on here? Bet on gold. We were playing Hangman a few days ago, remember? The message is strong. Bet on gold. Also, bet on silver right now because it's a big difference from gold to silver. It's like a 83 to 1 or whatnot. So, we're fighting the uh, 20 day in the daily time frame. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. That looks like a nice reversal, but it doesn't look like it's of any substance. Looks like we have a bull flag that's getting ready to break down. But, as long as we're on top of the 20-day, we can have a little bit of movement. It is a bull flag, and it's willing to bet we have a bullish divergence here. Yep. On the 20-day, this is one of those keys. Once you break down here, it's over. So, could we come up and retest this? Sure. But, other than that, we're running out of steam here. We have no volume. Even on the push-up, the volume was way off. The volume's way off here for Quant. So, now that we've established, we can even come over here and show you the kind of uptrend. 
And then once we break this uptrend, we come right back down. So to make it easier for you, once this uptrend breaks, we're going to come back down here to $41. And if somehow we break out to the top side, well, it'll be easy peasy lemon squeezy. There you go. There you go. I feel pretty good about that with Quant. Feels pretty good to me. Wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot dildo, but hey, still looks good to me. Ooh. Oh, the Duke. The Duke Kabo would be proud. The greatest stunt man Canada's ever seen. Duke Kaboom. So guys, how'd you guys like the episode today? Oh yeah, Kenny, uh, Kenny's had his day. I wouldn't advise Kenny to short swing trade, but what I would advise Kenny to do is he's very good at long holding. So if he finds the right spot to buy in, he's not an idiot. But he can get the hopium. That's the problem. So swing trading should be off the table for most scenarios. Are you ready for X Spectre, Tom? I know ends tomorrow and will be listed on Bet True soon. Ooh. I'm ready indeed. I'm ready indeed. Bring me the Spectre. <laughs> But guys, it's it's been an honor. This has been a very fun class. It really has. Um But with that, if that's everybody, if everybody's good, it's been an honor, it's been a privilege. And I can't wait to do it again tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I really love it. I really love this. Yeah, true. And I like the hour. You know, I like us all getting together and being able to talk and do something a little bit different than YouTube. Maybe later I'll do an impromptu YouTube live just to say hi to the local audience. But for now, Twitch, I think, for the lives, I mean, no matter what, it rains true because it uh, it's a lot easier. I think it's a lot more interactive, and it really helps me hit it home. So thanks, everybody. It's been a pleasure. JMF Tracy, no problems. Thanks a lot, everybody. It's really been an honor.